Let's get started in building shopping cart buttons. If you need to create PayPal's payment links, buy buttons, or configure the button settings, please view our other videos to guide you on doing that. Log in to your PayPal account and on the left menu, we can click on the Pay and Get Paid section and then you will find the Create Shopping Cart buttons. Go ahead and click on that. Here we are on the Shopping Cart button page and you will notice that we can go straight to the preview on the right side and you can see this Settings link here. Or if you scroll down, you will see the Payment Methods and also the How Your Buttons Will Look Settings link here. Lastly, if you scroll up, click on More Actions and you will see the Settings option. You can view our other video that goes over the Settings page options. And if you ever need to get to your current existing links and buttons, you can click on this same menu, the Saved Links and Buttons option. Or alternatively, you can click on this link up here that says Back to Saved Links and Buttons and that will take you to the list of previously created links and buttons. But for now, let's get started on this page. There are a few things you'll need to pay attention to on this page. There are three tabs here, product, checkout, and confirmation. The product tab is meant for you to provide the information of what you are selling or getting paid for. The checkout tab includes options which affect your overall order total, and the confirmation tab displays options of what you can set up after your customer has successfully completed the transaction. The preview on the right is fully interactable and updates in real time as you enter the information. The preview shows only the mobile view, but your customers can pay wherever you paste the link or button. So let's get started on the first product tab. Let's go ahead and give the product that we are selling a name and optional description here. I just pasted this, but as you paste or type, you will notice the preview updates on the right side to give you a rough idea of how it will look. I'll put a price here and make sure your currency is accurate as well. Optionally, you can toggle on quantity if you'd like to set a maximum number that the customer can purchase of this product. Again, optionally, you can toggle this on under images and upload up to five images here for your product. That's what I'll do right now. I'm going to go ahead and just upload and find the images on my local computer, select them, and you can do multiple images up to five. I'm just going to do a few images here. I'll speed it up. Let's click on show more options. If you want the customers to have the option to leave you a quick note during checkout, you can toggle this one and you can also make it mandatory if you'd like. Simply add a label for this option. If your product has a SKU or any sort of product identifier that you want to associate with this button, you can toggle this on and add that here. You also have the option to add product variants and track product inventory. You have up to three different variants that you can add, but just keep in mind that only the options of the first variant of your product can have their inventory tracked. Let's demonstrate the variants by toggling it on and giving this product variant a name here. We give you the option to also vary the price per each variant option by checking this box here, as well as add individual pictures for each option, but you could only add the price per option and the images for the first variant. The second and the third variants only include names and option names. So let's take a moment to configure a few variant options here, along with their respective images and prices. Here I'll add a second variant and it comes with less details as I mentioned before, no pictures or anything, but you can add up to 10 options per variant. I'm not going to add a third variant, but you're able to if needed. Let's toggle on the inventory option now and you'll see the individual options for the first variant will already be displayed here. We already added a product ID or SKU at the top, but you must add the item ID for the variant options here, as well as the quantity of each option. Optionally, you can decide at which quantity threshold amount you would like to get an email alert regarding this variant option. Check this box if you want to allow customers to purchase items even if they are out of stock. Otherwise, if the inventory tracks an item out of stock, customers will be unable to purchase it when they arrive at our hosted checkout. Now let's scroll back up and click on the checkout tab next. We do want to collect the shipping address, but if you don't need it, then you can toggle this off. Let's collect shipping address fees by toggling this on and using one of the options here. You can use shipping rules from settings that can be preset in your PayPal dashboard. You can view, manage, and configure these rules by clicking on this link here. Or you can set a fixed shipping price for this product. You can also tell customers this product has free shipping. 
or shipping may not be applicable for this product if you didn't originally collect shipping address. Let me change this to what I would like here. Lastly, you can toggle on taxes. And similarly, you have these options to preset the tax settings yourself from within your PayPal dashboards is general tax settings, which you can customize clicking on this link here. Or you can determine a specific tax percentage here, or perhaps taxes aren't applicable for this product. I'm going to go ahead and change this here to what I would like. Lastly, we can click on the confirmation tab and you have the option to be taken to your general settings page that manages all payment links and button settings, such as this auto return URL. This URL will be where customers are redirected to after a successful transaction. So make sure to configure it by clicking on this link. As a reminder, we have a separate video that goes over in detail all of the options for our payment buttons and links settings page. Once you're satisfied with all the modifications, you can click on build it at the top right. This will take you to the last page where I will briefly go over how to use the button that we just built. Starting with the shopping cart tab, wherever you create a shopping cart button, you will always be given two buttons, which will be your view cart button that you see the code and instructions for here on the right side by default, and also the actual add to cart button that if you click on this here, the page changes to show you the code for the button that is the add to cart button. Let's click once more on the view cart and you will have a part one where you can click on copy code and paste it on your website's head section and only paste it once. So you may create many of these add to cart buttons and will always be taken to this page with a part one, but only paste part one once in your website's document head. And once you've done that, we can scroll down and click on copy code and paste this in the body of your HTML code where you want the view cart button to show up. Make sure it's in a visible place on every page like the navigation, and you can also add it in multiple places if you need to, but it must be on the page at least once paired with an add to cart button. Otherwise, your add to cart button will not work. After you're done with this first part of the code, now we can click on the add to cart tab so that the page can update. And now you can click on copy code. This code block represents the add to cart button for this particular product that you just made. So make sure to paste it in the body of your website near the product where you would like the add to cart button to actually be displayed. I'm going to click on view cart to just say one last point that on your website, you can add multiple add to cart buttons for completely different products on the same page if you need to. Just make sure that you only add this part one code only once on your page and this view cart code below can be added multiple times if you need to although it's more common to have the button displayed only once per page but whether you add it once or multiple times for it to properly function it must be on the page where the add to cart button is also being displayed you can also obtain a payment link for this product so click on the payment link tab and you can copy this link here and send it to anybody via email or text or any social media Lastly, click on the QR code tab and you are able to download the QR code image by posting this image on social media or emailing it or texting it or even printing it if you need to. The QR code is a way to redirect to the payment link. Once again, if you ever need to see the code to any of your previously created payment links and buttons, you can always click on this link here that says back to saved links and buttons. And that will take you to the list of previously created links and buttons in case you need to edit them or view their code once more. And that's it. We have now successfully created shopping cart buttons.